it's just a it's just a tiny fraction. I mean, I'm, the work I'm doing to move this is so much easier, right? Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, just out in the woods behind the house, and uh, getting. I got a bunch of trails back here through the woods, and just having a look at my trails and seeing if any trees have blown down and need to be moved out of the way, and. Uh, Got my regular kit for doing that sort of stuff with me and I, I got to thinking this is a great subject for a bush machines video because uh, this is a machine. So this is a pretty pretty cheap thing you can include in your kit. A little pulley or two pulleys. Right? If you have, any of you took uh, you know some kind of physics in school you learned about pulleys you know that if you set them up properly you can Double, quadruple your strength. <laughs> if you're out in the woods all by yourself and it's all up to you and you're in a situation where a lever, I mean a lever, the, the woods are full of levers, right? If you got a saw or an axe, you can turn a tree into a lever. So the most readily available thing out in the woods is levers and wedges. But sometimes you've got to pull something and a lever and a wedge really isn't the solution for that. You want to tie a rope to something and make it go in a certain direction. Uh, that's where pulleys can come in and I mean this is this time of year This is really important because it's it's getting on to deer season and uh, a lot of guys my age uh, You shoot a large deer, you know, that can be a couple hundred pounds, right or, or less or more <laughs> right? Um, and we tend to get a bit stupid us uh, us guys who are in our late 40s early 50s and so on um, Thinking that we can just grab it and pull it which you can do, and if you're in great shape or you got a good back or anything like that, maybe that's not such a big deal. Uh, but as you get on in years, uh, that's where the injuries happen. And I can I can speak from experience. I took a deer last year; it was a good good size one, and uh, I actually had pulleys in my pocket, but I didn't want to take the time to set them up. You know, five minutes to five minutes or less that it takes to actually tie a rope and attach it to this and attach it to that and figure it out. Uh, I just grabbed the thing by the legs and started yanking until I could get it to the logging road and get it out. Right? Because often when you take a deer, it's not like, you know, it, it doesn't uh, have the courtesy of dying in the back of your truck. It, you know, it expires somewhere and you got to get it from that place to where a vehicle is, <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, if it's over really rough terrain, maybe you can't, maybe, you know, if you've got some sort of cart or something like that, that can work. But, I mean, look at this terrain here, really um, where I'm sitting. You could not get a game cart through this, right? It's not a trail. It's just wild forest with blown down trees everywhere, and uh, you know, even even if I even if there there was a, a bit of a trail over there, but even that trail isn't really. You'd have to have a pretty narrow cart, um, so uh, you'd have to drag this. And sure, you got a buddy or a son or you know a person you know who's got some strength to help you out. That solves a lot of problems. But if you're on your own, you it's all up to you. So uh, today I'm going to show you an example of just, you know, a couple of situations of how uh, the pulley is just so handy to uh, just improve your strength and, you know, uh, number one, it can allow you to move things you just couldn't move otherwise because you don't have the strength. Uh, on the flip side of that, it allows you to move things that you can, you have the strength to move, but you're taking a risk with your body moving those things because it's at your limit. And this log I'm sitting on is probably a good example of that. Um, the weight of this, let me see here. Yeah, so yeah, I can lift it, oh, but uh, I'd say this is, you know, over 200 pounds all in this here thing. And it's awkward, right? And to drag it, you've got friction and stuff like that. Let's say I wanted to move this log, or let's say this log was something big like a deer, right? Or I had a vehicle that was stuck and I had to move it. And it was stuck in such a way that it wasn't easy to move. So. You know, the situation I have here is you've got something you've got to move from A to B and you've pretty much got to max out to move that thing and uh, that could work out just fine. You could have a great, great day or something could pop, right? And uh, then you're not right for weeks or months or maybe you're never quite the same again. You know, back injuries tend to stay with you and they tend to uh, take a while to heal and uh, the older you get, the more of a price at least I'm finding, I seem to pay for them. Um, so, uh, and yes, there's lots of exercises you can do to strengthen your back and keep yourself limber and so on and so forth. This is not a, a health website, so I'm not gonna speak to that. Um, talk to your doctor or whatever on that sort of thing. 
Um, and just for those that might be uh, one of the suggesting these for me, I, I do basically like a kind of strength and conditioning routine uh, four mornings a week uh, just to keep keep myself uh, as in shape as I can stay. I just spend 15 minutes, but that's all I do, and it seems to help. Uh, and I haven't done that in previous years. I basically at 49, I've, I've realized that I can't just rely on my body. I'm an active guy and I do a lot of stuff, but I can't just rely on my body to, to uh, you know, roll with everything. I have to do a little bit uh, to, to, keep it, to keep it real. <laughs> so anyway, let's talk about how this, this all works. So the, re the way a pulley works is Part, you, you've, got some, you've got something you're trying to move, and you've got some sort of fixed object. I'm pointing to a tree over there. And you've got uh, a rope attached to the fixed object, and you've got the pulley attached to the thing you're trying to move, and you string a rope to the pulley and you pull it. So what happens is the, the fixed object's bearing half the weight of the thing you're trying to move, and you're bearing the other half. So by virtue of that, you're doubling your strength. Or cutting the strength needed from you, right? Reducing the force needed from your body by half, right? Which is very, very uh, useful, right? Uh, and there's other situations if you get extra pulleys where maybe, um, you know, you can't lift 200 pounds, but you have, let's say you've got something to move that's 400 pounds and you can't lift, uh, so we can, we can cut that in half by 200 pounds. We can make it 200 pounds, but you can't lift 200 pounds, but you weigh 200 pounds. <laughs> So you can sort of hang, right? So you can use a pulley to like redirect the force as well. So the pulleys, not only can they get a mechanical advantage, advantage, but you can also use the pulley to redirect, right? Pull from one direction, but have the, you know, basically we have a force going this way, but I'm actually pulling that way, but all the energy is, is going this way, right? So there's lots of uh, versatility um, to be found from having pulleys. And that's why I think you should always have two. Although in many cases, if it's anything you can lift, one is fine because you're, you're dropping the weight in half. So enough talking. Uh, let me show you how to set this thing up here. All right, so the scenario here is I got a, I got a, a heavy thing I want to move. And you see how I got this thing set up? All right, with this loop, right? So I can just pass the loop underneath the log, relatively close to the front. Closer to the front, you get it the easier. And pass that through. Okay, that, that's going to hang, basically the harder I pull, the tighter this gets, right? But, but it will not, you know, it, I can always take it off. So it's really easy to attach the pulley to the thing you're trying to move, but also it doesn't get st stuck on it, right? And this is just, <laughs> this is just dollar store rope. I don't know what the breaking strength is, but I've doubled it up here, so it should be fine. Okay, so there's that. Next step. All right, so here's a... Here's a tree that's in the direction I want the thing to go. And uh, it's kind of a, it's a dead tree, so hopefully it's got some, got some life in it. Uh, anyway, I'm just gonna put a little sort of, uh, what would you call that? Slip knot, right? It's a knot that, it'll hold it tight, but when I, when I wanna undo it, it'll, it'll come undone pretty, pretty well, right? So we just go around once, all right, stick it through, make a little hole. Cinch up like that. All right, that won't, won't go anywhere. Okay, now let's go back. I thought I'd show that show that knot that I used to attach the rope to the tree. It's a rope that holds very well, but it comes loose whenever you want. All right, so all you do is you just put it around the tree and uh, pass it around like that, and you make make a loop like that. So it's it's basically. It's a slip knot with a bite in it. If, with a heavy rope like this, it will not come loose no matter how hard you pull. But then all you got to do is pull this little tag end, right? And it comes undone. Okay, so, you know, so it's like a slip knot. If you, if you know what a slip knot is, right, you'd have the end through here. Okay, so that, that's a slip knot, right? You'd have this a lot tighter, right? But the problem with the slip knot is if you pull hard enough, it won't it won't come out, right? Now, if you get this tight enough, right, it won't come out. So with this other approach, I don't even, I don't even know what this knot's called. I mean, it's just something I've figured out over the years. But you know, you you so you and you have the rope around, you put it around like this, and you make a hole like that, 
and you just pass the tag in up through that hole. Just get it really good and tight, right? So we got we got this tag end here, right? And this is our working end. Okay, so that's nice and tight. Right now we can put lots of strain on that, right? But no matter what we do, you know, within reason, right? If we're using human strength, um, all you got to do is pull the tag end and out she goes. All right, so it's one of those knots that it's very quick to set up once you're, uh, once you're accustomed to making it. If you don't know that knot, it's worth, worth learning. It's one of the more useful ones up there with the half hitch and the jam knot and other knots like that. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I have to look. Someone, one of my viewers will name it. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's very, very tight, right? But the advantage is for any knot that has to be temporary and you've got rope that you don't want to cut because it's precious in some way, right? You do that knot when you're with other people and you're going to look like you know what you're doing. Uh, you're the guy people are going to look to to uh, to solve the problems. <laughs> you're going to look competent. <laughs> all right, now at this stage, all I got to do is uh, pass the rope through the pulley. All right, a lot of holes here. It's treacherous. All right, and just go. Right? It's a fridge. It's so much lighter this way. Gotta move the camera already. Try that. Right. It's just a it's just a tiny fraction. I mean, I'm, the work I'm doing to move this is so much easier, right? All right. So I I just moved that about eight feet, and uh, I mean it's a good size log. I didn't give you a sense of the size of it, right? It's about, uh, I'd say, eight inches in diameter at the base. And at the far end there, it's probably six inches in diameter. And it's been laying on the ground, so it's not dry, right? It's, it's basically saturated, but not rotten. So it's quite heavy. Um, so, you know, pretty easy to move along uh, when you use just a single pulley. <laughs> attached to a tree right and of course you got to keep reattaching it to different trees and sort of leapfrogging it along uh, and that's a bit of a pain but uh boy it's worth it if you uh you know consider having to spend two months recovering from a back injury or something like that right i mean it just saves you uh a lot of suffering <laughs> right <laughs> so uh let me just uh there is a trail over there. Maybe uh, we'll try to uh, get it to that trail just using this rope method. Uh, I really, it's hard to capture all this uh, using the camera with these weird angles, but, uh, uh, or we can take it somewhere else. Where could we move that? Maybe we'll move it down that way. Yeah, that's, that makes a lot of sense. Well, you know, there's nothing, nothing over there I want to go to, but uh, just for the sake of having a, a destination <laughs> right <laughs> so uh, let's yeah let's try taking it that way
All right, so that didn't take long. And uh, so I, I moved that. I mean, there's where I started over there, where that sort of torn up moss is. And uh, I moved it maybe, uh, oh, what is that? 10, 20, 30, maybe 40 feet, right? With very little, very little strain put on my body, right? And I mean, the only, the only hassle is having to, you know, reattach the rope, um, you know, as you advance. But I mean, that, that works out great. And all I did at the, uh, at the far end, at the log end, is that I, I had a little, uh, where's it now? I had a little knot that I tied in the end of the rope just so it, so it wouldn't slip through here as I was moving it along. <laughs> you don't want it to pop back out and have it, right? So you just put a little knot in the end like that so it won't pop that through as you're repositioning your rope, tying it on to different fixed points, right? But I mean, that is way easier. <laughs> way easier uh, than trying to just grab it with your hands. I mean, even if you just have a loop like this, that you can pick it up and grab it by um, makes it a lot easier because you can stand straighter you're not bent over as much you can get your body a little bit more you know you can use your body a little bit more efficiently especially if you put a put a stick through this you can grab it with both hands right there's a lot you can do with just a simple loop like this but then you add a pulley to the equation and you double your strength all right here's a different sort of situation where you get even more uh, bang for your buck by using both pulleys okay so I've started here. I have got a rope attached to the tree. The rope goes to a pulley that's attached to a tree. Okay, fixed object. Then the rope goes back and it goes through a pulley that's attached to the log. Okay, and there's, there's lots of different ways to do this, but some of them seem the same as others, but you don't get the, the physics behind you, okay? With this one here, you get a lot more. So, you know, with this, with this setup, I'm just, just grabbing this thing. I need very little, like, like I'm barely, I bet you my, you know, my kid, my kid could move this log. My, my children, yeah. My 11 year old daughter, who's you know she's big for her age she's five foot two <laughs> but you know she's still just you know an 11 year old not super strong but my my 11 year old daughter could move this along no problem no problem it takes a bit more you know it's a bit more tricky to set up right but if you had something really heavy my goodness what a difference what a difference that makes just for the sake of those uh questioning the math or thinking about that equation uh, in terms of the mechanical advantage uh, to move the log one meter, I have to pull three meters of rope, right? So I'm affecting that equation. I'm affecting that equation by a factor of three. Uh, work equals force times distance. So I'm changing the distance factor of that equation by a factor of three. So the work is reduced by a factor of three, right? So that's how that works uh, mathematically, as far as I understand, anyway. Certainly felt lighter. All right, so that's a bit more tricky. Um, but if you had something really heavy, you just needed to move a few feet, change position or whatever, like positioning a moose so that you could, uh, uh, you know, dress it out, for instance, and you're by yourself and it's just too heavy to maneuver and you want to get it on a slightly uphill grade or whatever. Um, it's worth taking an extra five minutes. <laughs> and it's handy to have in your back pocket a little diagram of how to do this stuff, right? If you, for the two pulley one, I always have to think about it, right? But the one pulley is pretty easy, right? You attach the pulley, you attach the pulley to the thing you want to move. You attach a rope to a fixed object. You string the rope through it and you, you just start pulling. Right? Um, so the second pulley, it allows you to add more mechanical advantage or to redirect your uh, strength if you if you can't pull from a certain direction you have to pull from a different direction or whatever you you're trying to pull down using your weight from a tree you attach you, you, you attach it to the top of a tree or you know good ways up a tree and you're pulling down to make something go up right you need the second pulley to redirect uh, but you can also use the second pulley to uh, amplify your force anyway just a couple tips on using pulleys and, uh, you know, it, it doesn't weigh much to have. I mean, the pulleys I've got here in this kit are 
pretty pretty small, right? All right, this is a really small bit of kit. You could have one in your pocket, right? That's a good thing to have along. And you got to have this heavier kind of rope, right? So you got to have that. Right, so this is something you could carry in your pocket if you were going out for the day. Um, but really, this is a better set up to be included in a back backpack, right? You got like 25, 50 feet of really good, strong, good quality rope, right? That'll fit through the, the holes in this thing, right? This just barely fits it, but it works, right? I could be using a bigger pulley, but this is fine for what I'm doing here. You want a pulley that's, you know, weighted for the, rated for the weights you want to be moving around, right? But anyway, uh, yeah, you have some rope, have a couple little smaller pieces like this, right? And a main rope, right? And maybe a, you know, a spare bit of rope, right? Uh, that way you're sort of ready for anything, right? But have a couple pulleys, at least one, maybe two, in your kit. If you're out in the woods doing stuff where you're going to be required to use your strength to move things around, um, especially if you're nursing a bad back. But also if your back's just totally fine and you want to reduce the risk of hurting your back, or if you need to do something that requires superhuman strength, right? Uh, I can't move 400 pounds. <laughs> Right? No matter how hard I try, uh, but with a couple of pulleys I can move it no problem. If I got enough pulleys, my my 11 year old daughter could do it. Right? That's the great thing about being a human being—we can solve uh, problems with our ingenuity. Now, I mean, there's going to be lots of people just saying, oh, "I just hook it up to the winch of my ATV." Sure, that's another solution, but this is outdoors on the cheap, and uh, you know whatever you're doing out in the woods, uh, whether that's hunting or whatever. Um, I think there's a bit of a misapprehension, that misperception that you need an ATV to do all those things. Uh, if you're reasonably healthy and you're, you're clever with this sort of stuff, I, I think having you know, a couple 299 pulleys is a lot cheaper than owning an ATV and the vehicle you need to move it around and the trailer you need to put it in and the place you need to store it and the license and the permit you need to drive it and all that other crap. <laughs> Right? <laughs> right? If you're in that situation, and I said when I started this channel, this was aimed at the younger me, right, who didn't have anything. Um, you know, you want to go deer hunting, for example, and all you've got is a small compact car. Well, you can put a deer in the trunk of a small compact car. You just put a tarp down, and that's no problem. Um, but how do you get the deer to your car without that ATV, with all that weight? And sure, having a buddy to help you is great, but what if none of your buddies do that sort of stuff, right? Uh, so this is just another way around it. A couple pulleys, you know, two five dollars worth of pulleys and ten bucks worth of rope. <laughs> you really can't beat that as a solution, uh, you know, if you're in that situation, right? So um, it's a good thing to have in your kit and it can solve a lot of problems and prevent, prevent you uh, a lot of pain and suffering uh, with just a couple extra minutes of uh, you know, prep work and tying things up and so on and so forth. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, and then subscribe. And until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching.